Hi, welcome to this virtual BVM conference talk. The talk is entitled Interspecies Intertissue Domain Adaptation for Mitotic Figure Assessment. And it has the subtitle Learning New Tricks from Old Dogs. What do I mean by that? You will find out in a couple of minutes, so stay tuned. My name is Marc Opreville and I'm presenting this work, which has been a collaboration of the Institute of Veterinary Pathology at Freie Universität Berlin and the Institute of Neuropathology at Friedrich Alexander Universität, where I'm also working. In this image, you see two inventions that defined the field I'm working in. I'm talking about digital pathology. Please join me now and come with me to the world of tiny things. What we see now is a thin slice of tissue, colored with hematoxylin and eosin. This is what a pathologist would utilize to perform tumor diagnosis and staging. Of special interest in this process are the following kinds of cells. These are cells in the state of cell division, also called mitosis. Their relative density is indicative of tumor proliferation and is a decisive factor in prognostication for almost all tumor types. Microscopy images can show a great deal of variability, influenced by staining, tissue type, or even species. In our collaboration, we built up two datasets of significant quantity from two canine tumor types, both of which have high prevalence in dogs. By not only annotating small areas of the whole microscopy slide, but the complete image, we outnumbered current datasets from human pathology significantly. Now one very interesting question is, however, if we can harness the power of these big data sets and use classification systems trained on those on images from human pathology. This is why I was saying we want to learn new tricks from old dogs. To really assess generalization, for our experiments we used, besides the well-known METOS 2014 data set, a newly built data set from human meningioma, which is a common brain tumor. What you see here are patches cropped around cells that are either mitotic figures or structures that look very much alike them and can be easily confused. In fact, only these ones have been identified as real mitotic figures by experts. What you also see in this image is that there is quite some variation in color and structure, some of which can be related to them being from different data sets. We will refer to this as a visual domain shift in the following. This domain shift might stand in our way if we want to have a truly generalizing solution. If we want to utilize those big data sets, we want our solution to be agnostic to the domain and only differentiate true mitotic figures from similarly looking cells. This solution would then be considered robust. Let us now first investigate how strongly the domain shift affects a classification system trained on another data set. What you see here is a T-SNE representation of a feature vector of a ResNet 18 CNN pre-trained on ImageNet. For those who are not familiar with T-SNE's plots, each circle is representing a single image. The closer the circles are, the more similar the metric perceives the images. What we find is a clustering according to the data set and only mild intersections. As you can see on the right hand side, unfortunately the clustering does not appear along the labels, that is if it's a mitotic figure or not. But of course the system was never trained for the differentiation of mitotic figures and their lookalikes, so let us move on to a second experiment. We will be looking at the representations or features acquired in two distinct points within a standard ResNet-based CNN, the positions being indicated by the two arrows. First, behind the ResNet stem, and secondly, behind the first fully connected layer and just before the final layer. We trained the system for several epochs on the task of mitosis classification on one of our datasets. In the first plot, we see that there is apparently some clustering, most likely due to the primary task, which is not shown here. This is also reflected in the representations of the second stage. The really interesting question is, however, 
how will the representations of a previously unused data set look like and what can we learn from it? It is known from literature that an almost perfect intersection of features will lead to a good performance in the target domain. Unfortunately, this is not the case. As we can see from the blue circles of images in the target domain, we find the same clustering according to the domain as previously, which, as we show later, can significantly deteriorate results. It comes as no surprise that this clustering is already present in the first feature vector. If we now color the feature vector representations according to the classes or the class labels, we have even more reason to worry that the results may be impacted by this. We can find a clustering according to class label, mitosis or non-mitosis, on samples of the original source domain data set, which are indicated by the red circles on the left plot. You can see the all green to all purple color change in the right plot where there are the samples of the source domain visible in the left plot. To the contrary, we can't find this color gradient for the circles representing images of the target domain. Now that we know the obstacle, the question is, what can we do against it? For this, we propose to use unsupervised domain adversarial training. We add a secondary head to the network to predict the domain of the current sample. This, of course, is appropriate to enhance clustering according to the domain and not to avoid it, which is our actual intention. Thus, we have to apply a trick that will inhibit the network from building features discriminative for the domain. The trick is that we insert a so-called gradient reversal layer. This layer behaves as identity transform during the forward pass, but during backwards pass it will invert the gradients and scale them according to a defined factor. Thus, the network learns not to discriminate the domain, but to not discriminate the domain. We attach the gradient reversal layer at two distinct positions in the network. First, just after the ResNet network stem, and secondly, attached to the first fully connected layer and the results being concatenated to the output vector of the fully connected layer of the domain prediction head. Of course, we also had to adjust the loss function accordingly. The lower part represents a basic binary cross entropy for the domain, while the upper part represents a customized form of that loss, which is domain blind, since we cannot rely on labels from the target domain. We combine both of those partial losses using a factor and a normalization constant, as you can find in the paper. But let us now come to the results. The plots shown here just represent another instance of the training, in this case trained on our canine cutaneous mast cell tumor dataset and with inference performed on the MITOS 2014 dataset. I will refer to this constellation, that is without any domain adaptation, as the baseline in the following. Now shown in the upper plot are representations of an instance trained with the help of domain adversarial training. We can see that the clustering according to the domain is no longer present. We can also see that the gradient between green and purple on the right hand side is present for both the source as also the target domain. This can make us hopeful that classification performed using this system will be less susceptible to the domain shift. And in fact, that's also what we find in our experiments. We performed experiments from both canine datasets to both human datasets, shown in the left four columns of the box whisker plot, and also within our canine datasets shown on the right two columns. I have to add here that the experiment was done on an equal distribution of both classes and class labels. This means that a total confusion of the system would lead to a classification performance of around 50%. In this plot, the red box always indicates the baseline, that is the system without domain adaptation. The green box indicates the system with domain adaptation and we can see that for almost every condition we find a strong benefit from the domain adaptation. I should note that we ran all experiments with the same set of hyperparameters. Our results indicate that the stronger the original domain shift is, the more we benefit from the method. As shown in the rightmost column, the system did, for one condition, not improve results, but also did not deteriorate them. 
This is the same condition that had also the strongest overlap in the original feature distribution of our firstly discussed experiment. As domain adversarial training is, as the name suggests, a form of adversarial training and thus has strong similarities to generative adversarial networks, the same restrictions as for those can apply here as well. And although this is a speculation, we can assume that one of the underlying mechanisms at work here might be a vanishing gradient of the adversary due to the discussed similarity of the datasets. Let me now summarize our findings. As was previously described in literature, we also found a strong domain shift in histopathology slides. The domain shift had a strong impact on the classification performance, yielding at times even results close to guessing which would render such a system useless. We propose to use domain adversarial training as one unsupervised method to circumvent this issue, since it was shown to improve results for various conditions significantly. Finally, let me use this opportunity to draw your attention to the fact that the biggest of the dataset is already available as open data. Just follow the QR code at the bottom. And of course, all code for the experiment was made available on GitHub, which is the second QR code at the top. Thanks for listening.